Well, we're going to go into God's Word now. And as we do that, people online will be listening still. And after the sermon, our online will be shut down. Um, just because we're going to be going into a time of discipleship together, walking through some questions based on what we listened to from God's Word this morning, so we can be more open to be able to be willing to say what's on our heart and our mind from what God's teaching us in this time together. And so I just want to make that heads up for those of you who, who are new or walked in late. Um, that's kind of what we're doing going forward as a church. Because um, I think it's good for us to be able to not just hear the word, but then let's talk through together how we apply that in our daily lives. Um, God's word talks about how to do not be, hear be hearers only of the word, but be doers of it. And so we as a church really take that seriously. How can we hear what God's word tells us and then live that out? Um, I'm sure all of us, if I were to take a poll in our, in our room right now and uh, ask you to raise your hands, which I'm not going to ask you to do, but... I'm sure if I ask you the question of how many times you've come across a Christian who you would doubt that is a Christian because of their actions. And I'm sure most, if not all of us, could raise our hand saying, maybe we might even be able to say that, yeah, I've been that kind of a Christian too. Um, I know in my own life, there's been times in my life where I said I was a Christian, but didn't act like it. And uh, so it's important for us to study God's word together and also how to apply this together. So I invite you to take your Bibles in hand with you as we turn to God's Word. And uh, I'm not going to go to one passage right off the buck this morning because we have a few passages to look at. And uh, before we do that too, for those who are new and those who came in late, um, actually I didn't mention this at all at first. Um, on our bookshelf to the side there, there's a couple of trays that have some information. One is our monthly bulletin. And so if you want to grab one of these on the way out, it has our calendar on the inside, what's going on in the life of our church this month. That doesn't mean that's a complete calendar because who knows what God leads us to do in the next coming weeks. So at least you have a basis of what's going on this next month. And on the back has some information about us as a church too. A Bible verse of the month as well too. Um, and actually if you look at the, if you don't have one in your hand, the back verse on it this month says, he must increase but I must decrease. It's actually one of the verses we're going to be looking at this morning. So I bet you grab that this morning so you are aware of what's going on. Or also check our websites too. Our calendar is up on there. So I encourage you to check that out too for what's going on in the life of our church too. Um, I'm not going to necessarily announce what's going on in the life of our church every week anymore um, because we can read the bulletin, we can go online. I know some of you are looking at me like going, what are you doing? <laughs> um, I think we can get that information from online or the bulletin we have. If there's anything new that's not on there, I'll always announce it. But uh, when there's key things coming up like a potluck, well, I'll m m definitely announce that the week before. Speaking of which, today we have potluck too. And um, we have lots of yummy, yummy food at the back that we're going to partake of together after. And so everyone's welcome to stay. Even if you didn't bring something, you're welcome to stay because I'm sure there's more than enough. So please do stay and join us for, for fellowship around food after. Um, I don't want to talk about us and North American, North American Christians, but uh, we always seem to fellowship better around food. And uh, I think I'm kind of evidence of that a little bit. But uh, <laughs> so Again, if you have God's Word in your hand, we're going to look to God's Word. This morning, the theme is, the title of this sermon is called Full Steam Ahead. Full Steam Ahead. Now, the reason for that is, as we know that there's been a few people who have left our church recently, and it's sad to see some of those people leave. We, we grieve those people. Uh, one person passed away uh, August, right. Over six months ago already. Wow. It's hard to believe that that's eight months now, isn't it? Se seven months. Yeah. It's hard to believe that time's gone by so fast. And so we haven't really talked about the passing of Terry and, and haven't had a chance of his church to really grieve the loss of Terry. Um, Terry is one of them. Him and Millie were part of our church right from the very beginning. Uh, Donna as well as Keith as well. Keith who has moved on now. Um, so we're, we're kind of a bit of a time of grief as a church, but um, I hope the words that I share with you this morning are of encouragement to you. Um, I know that as God has been wrestling with me with these words, um, that's an encouragement and also a challenge for me. Um, so I'm going to start with this illustration with you this morning. Sometimes in life we kind of go through struggles and tribulations, don't we? Times that are really hard for us to work, walk through sometimes. 
So take this ping pong ball, let it represent us this morning, okay? What's inside this ball? Air, right. It's part of what makes it a bit able to bounce, right? So if I bounce it, well, <laughs> didn't quite work on that. And I, I know the carpet's not going to work as well, but on a good surface, let me try this table. That'll work better probably, hopefully. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so that's the reason why this is able to bounce is part of the material of it, but also what's inside, which is air. What would the air represent in this ping pong ball? Any guesses? Holy Spirit, yes. Do you know why the air in here would represent the Holy Spirit? Good, I'm glad. Because then I can answer it then. <laughs> the reason why this, the air in here represents the Holy Spirit is because this word spirit actually means breath. So the Holy Spirit is actually in Scripture referred to often as, as the breath of God. So the Holy Spirit is a person who is part of the Trinity, who is God, but he, we also need to remember that he is the breath of God within us. So when we come to faith in Jesus Christ, we receive the Holy Spirit. That's why we have spiritual gifts and are able to do the work God has called us to do because the Holy Spirit is in us at the moment of salvation. And so the air in there represents the Holy Spirit. So th this represents us as a Christian, this ball. But sometimes... We go through trials sometimes and hardships. Notice as I pour this here, kind of the turbulence, the ball kind of goes under. It's being pushed down under a little bit. Oh, you can't see it? The ball's kind of trying to move around away from it sometimes, doesn't it? But even though there's kind of a turbulence for it, what's happened to it? It floats. Even though the ball was under pressure, it still wanted to float on top of the water, didn't it? That water being poured over that ball and kind of causing the ball to bounce around a little bit and the water movement around the side, causing it to jiggle around a bit, it's kind of like the storms of life. Sometimes we go through hardships, things that are really hard that sometimes we go, Lord, where are you in this? Have any of you faced that? I know I have. Many times in my life, we're like, Lord, where are you? And it doesn't mean that he isn't there. I remember the, fire, the footprints poem where there's two sets of footprints and at the end of the person's life, they look back and they see that times there's one set of footprints and he knows that's the toughest times in his life. And he asked God, where were you in those instances? And God's reply to him was, is in those times that I carried you. We're like that ping pong ball. There's going to be times where things are going to be rough for us. Things are going to try to push us under the water. But because if we're filled with the Holy Spirit, we'll continue to float to the top as God brings us to the top. Nothing can put us under because we are God's. We, God holds us in, our, in his hands. With that, this morning, there's three things I want to share with you that I believe that God has led me to share with you this morning. Um, a week ago this past Tuesday, as you all know, I meet every Tuesday morning with a group of pastors at Beach Corner Church. And it's neat to see because there's a whole broad stream of churches. Uh, there's two charismatic Pentecostal churches. There's a free church. There's a couple Baptist churches. There's myself, uh, us as a church too, that are part of this what's called One Church Worship. And a free Methodist too. And, and it's just neat how God has brought all these churches together to worship God from time to time together and do God's work together from time to time. Anyway, last week, Tuesday, when I was in prayer and I was going, Lord, because I was feeling kind of down too. Well, not kind of. I was feeling really down actually uh, with, with one person leaving our church and a couple families recently. Uh, it's been heavy on my heart and like I've been asked, Lord, what, what is wrong? Is it something wrong with me? Is there some sin in my life that, and I, I was like, in my life, there's no habitual sin um, so Lord, what is it? My wife and I have discussed this a lot the last couple of months. Where are we at as a church? What, God, what are you doing? Uh, this is painful. It's hurtful for us as a church. And I'm sure I see some of you nodding your heads. It's, you're agreeing too, understanding. It's, it's been hard, hard for all of us. It's, it's kind of like this ping pong ball. We've been under pressure for a little bit. 
As I talk to some of you and I talk to other people, other Christians outside of our church too, it seems like there's a lot of spiritual battles going on, spiritual warfare going on. So I so appreciate Mark's prayers Tuesday nights when we pray together. He's always praying too about the spiritual battle. I so appreciate that. So Mark, thank you every time you pray that each week. Um, a couple Sundays ago too, Mark led us in prayer too and, and specifically prayed about spiritual warfare going on around us. And, and it's so good to be praying about that for God's protection because God can and will protect us. But we also remember too that the battle is the Lord's. So there's three things I want to share with you this morning. The first is this. You have to pers- persevere through the trial. Persevere through the trial. Turn with me to James chapter 1. If you don't have a printed Bible and you have an app on your phone, that's fine to use too. Uh, I have no problem with people using your phone with your Bible. Just make sure you have it on silent mode and make sure you have the internet off so you're not distracted from other things on your phone. (laughs) Um. If you come across Hebrews, James is the book right after Hebrews. James chapter 1, verse 2 to 8. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. What was James thinking of when he wrote those words? <laughs> I don't know about you, when I read those words and I go, Lord, I'm supposed to be happy when I face trials? I don't think that's necessarily what God is saying, but what he's meaning here is that knowing that when we face trials and tribulations, that God has something planned for us. Continue in verse 3. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking something. No, it doesn't say that, does it? Lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. This passage is often talked about the perseverance passage. Where it's telling us when we face hardships, to persevere in faith still. Don't give up. No matter how hard the situation is, don't give up. Because God's trying to do something in you. He's trying to perfect your faith. He's trying to grow you and strengthen you more. The people who have the strongest faith in Christ are the ones who oft- have often faced the heart- most hardships in life. It's because God wants to do something amazing through such people. So when we face the trials and tribulations of life, allow God to do that work in you. It's not going to stay that way forever. He's going to bring you out of that period at some point. But he wants to use that to build your faith in him, to do something amazing through you. But then again in verse 5 too, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach and will be given him. I think when we face trials and tribulations in life, it's important to ask God that question then to you. Lord, I need wisdom through this time and, and this period. Lord, I need to have your wisdom and your understanding. I may not be able to see too far ahead of me, but Lord, I know you're doing something. So Lord, give me the wisdom to persevere and the wisdom to grow closer to you. The wisdom to persevere. And God will give that wisdom to us. Now, this passage actually talks about any wisdom, so we can ask God for any wisdom. He will give it to us, and exceedingly. But specifically, we've faced hardships and trials. Ask God for the wisdom you need to persevere through those hardships. We have felt that in a while, in the last little while as a church, where I know in talking with some of you, you've been asking the same question that Sherry and I have been asking, Lord, what are you doing? But God keeps on telling me to be faithful. There's one person that have, has left our church recently and uh, two years ago, God said to me, 
if I remove this person, are you going to be obedient to me still? Are you going to be faithful to what I've asked you to do here? And my response is, Lord, I will do whatever you ask me to do. It's not always an easy thing. Because yes, sometimes I have questions too. But when we trial, persevere through trials and tribulations, if we're obedient to what God tells us to do, stay faithful and persevere, God will bless our efforts. And we'll see that in just a moment here in the next point. So first thing for us this morning is persevere through the trial. Point number two this morning is this is God's church. I have been had to have been reminded of this time and time again, and not just in this time together as New Life Christian community, but in other churches I've pastored in the past too. And I see this in the church itself, that many of us need to be reminded that this is God's church, it's not our church. We are the church. The church is not four walls of a building. The church are people that God draws together in fellowship together in him. So this is a great reminder for us. The church is God's. When sometimes I talk about us as New Life Christian community, sometimes I talk about my church or our church. It's not really the right words I should be using because it's God's church. What I should be saying is the assembly or the fellowship of believers that come together called New Life Christian community. I know that's a long phrase, but you get the point, right? Because the church is God's. It's not my church. It's God's church. I've heard that in some churches too sometimes talk about, well, it's my church, so I have a vote. I give to the church, and so I have a say. Well, no, 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 that's not the right attitude. It's God's church, and we are a part of it. Turn with me to Psalm 127. This is one verse that some time ago that God brought to me, and, and I really admit that I struggled with this verse when I first read it. Um, well, not, not that it was the first time I read it, but in the time period I read it, Psalm 27, verse 1. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. I admit, when I was reading this passage, probably within the last year, I was like, Lord, <laughs> I don't want to be laboring in vain. I, I'll be obedient to what you told me to do, but I don't want to labor in vain. I want to see us as a church grow, first of all, in spiritual depth, but also in number, so we have more who join us that we can in encourage in the faith too, that we can disciple, that we work alongside together, using our spiritual gifts together to reach the lost of Onaway in this area encouraging each other to grow in our faith together, worshiping the Lord together, doing all kinds of amazing things through us that God will do together. So I admit, I wrestle with this, but this is a reminder though still that this church is God's church and it is he who will bring the increase. Next passage, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Our fingers are going to get an exercise this morning, thumbing through paper this morning. But it's good because God's word is so rich. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58. Remember the verse I just read a moment to us? I got excited when I read this verse because it seems to be the fulfillment and completion of the verse we just read that those who labor, if it's not the Lord building the house, the labors work in vain, right? But here's these wonderful words from verse 15, chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast. Hmm. Speaking of perseverance there, isn't it again? Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Let me read those words again. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not 
in vain. If we are being obedient to what God is telling us to do, our labor together as New Life Christian community is not in vain. God is already using us and going to continue to use us to do amazing things for him. So don't give up. Even if you feel discouraged because of those few who have left us recently, know that God is still at work in us and through us. We just need to be obedient to him and to do his work together. Flip back now then to John chapter 3, verse 30. As you all know, I don't necessarily flip around to that this much usually, but uh, I think these are all important words. John 3, verse 30. He must increase, but I must decrease. He must increase, but I must decrease. Again, this is a reminder for us that the church is God's church. It's not my church. It's not your church. It's God's church. I shared a video with you all several weeks ago by a, a pastor named, named Nate Sella. Uh, his YouTube channel is uh, Wise Disciple. And um, you know me, th- it's not often I recommend a YouTube channel, but this one I, I do recommend because Nate Sella does such a great job. I think there's only one time he's spoken that I've disagreed with. Um, so he has a lot of really good stuff on his YouTube channel. Challenge is really good and challenging for the church to hear, um, but good things too. Um, anyway, the video I'd shared with you then talked a little bit too about this one pastor who God had to deal with. And this is, this is a pastor of a church that is very successful in the States. It's a large church in the States. Um, although, by the way, a large church doesn't necessarily mean successful, by the way. <laughs> it's not the number of people who are part of the church. It's, it's, are we being faithful to what God's told us to do is what a, a successful church is. But anyway, th- their church is a church that has baptized hundreds of people a year. And this is a church that was in the, u- in the news in the States because of that. But yet, God had to deal with them in some pride issues. And, and he wa- as God was dealing with him, God was doing something amazing in the life of his church. Nate Sella said, at the same time hearing that sermon, God was doing the same thing in him and when I heard Nate Sell's video talking about this pastor in the video clip, and when he said, God was doing a work in me in the same th- time too, and it's been the last year, year and a half, that God's been trying to get that message into my heart and mind, that I must decrease and he must increase. Sometimes when pastors get together, we get excited about, oh, we hear about other churches that are growing in size and more numbers are being added to their churches. And, and I admit, when I've heard that of other churches in the past, not that that's the issue anymore to, for me, but at some point, I was jealous of some of these other churches that were seeing great growth. And that's why God's been dealing with me. You must decrease, Kevin. I must increase. It's my church, Kevin. It's not yours. You decrease so that I might increase. May that be of encur- words of encouragement to us this morning too. May we all together as New Life Christian community seek to decrease so that God increases. That God will do amazing things through us. But it's not because of us doing it. We're just the tools in God's hand to do the, do the work. <coughs> we think of a mechanic when they do work on a vehicle or a builder of a house when they build a v- house. Does anyone give praise to the tools? No. They were what's used to build the vehicle or to build the house. Same with us as in God's hands. We are tools in God's hand to do his work. I don't know about you, but I find that humbling. When I think about how God would take me and use me, this lump of clay, and he wanted to use me to do his work. Some of you know my background a little bit too. In my past, I have had a speech impediment in my past. I still struggle with that at times. But that God would choose me to be a pastor and to preach and to teach. God can use any and all of us. 
and all of us together to build his church. We must decrease that he might increase. That way he gets all the glory. When people look at New Life Christian community as we grow in depth and when God adds to us to those he entrusts to us to care for, may we remember that too. That all the glory goes to God. It's not what any one of us have done, but how God has used us. So God gets the glory. Our third and final point this morning is this. Be faithful with the few. Be faithful with the few. Turn with me to Matthew. Matthew 25. This is the last passage we're looking at this morning. Matthew 25, verse 14 through 30. For it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So also he who had two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with him, with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over, f- over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also who had two talents came forward, saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here I have made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He also, who received the one talent, came forward, saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you do not sow and gathering where you, do, where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant. You knew that I reap where I do not sow and gather where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money within the bankers. And at my command, I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has more... For to everyone who has little, sorry, for to everyone who has will more be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness, in that place where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Pretty hefty parable, isn't it? but an important one. Because again, it's calling us to be faithful with what God has given us and to multiply what he gives us. To not be lazy. To not just be coming on Sundays just to sit here and and uh, be encouraged for the week. But to be busy using our spiritual gifts and doing the work God has called us to do and being faithful with the few. As Sharon and I have been talking often, as I've mentioned several times already this morning, we have come to this very thing too. God is telling us, be faithful with the few. To care for those who God has put under our care. That goes for not just for me, but for all of us together as New Life Christian community. Be faithful with who God has brought to us. 
and be faithful with who God will join to be with us. Do you want to see God move and do something awesome? Then use the spiritual gifts God has given you. Share the gospel to God put, who God puts in your path. And when God has, gives us opportunity together as a church to work together to do that too in our community, when God gives you the opportunity to disciple someone, whether it be a spur-of-the-moment situation or intentional one-on-one discipleship, be faithful with who God puts in your path. And may we be together faithful with each other. And as we're faithful to each other, as God has called us to work together, he will bless that. Like the servant with the five talents, he'll add five more talents. Like the servant with three, he'll add three more. All we need to do is be faithful to what God wants us to do. To not give up hope, but to persevere and allow God to move and work. Sherry was talking with me too recently about a fellow ground and story context is different than what I'm going to share it with right now, but um, some of you might remember too that we were part of another church in the community a while some time ago. And one Sunday morning, God spoke to me as we're seeing a hymn Seven years and then the harvest. And we're excited about that. And then God led us to start this new church together and we're excited because the seven years were coming up. And seven years came up. And now we're at eight years this summer. And I was like, Lord, where's the harvest? Sometimes God has allowed things to be fallow for a while. In the Old Testament, what the Jews did, what God commanded the Jews to do was six years where they planted their fields and reaped from those fields, and in the seventh year, they let it go foul. Fou- not foul. F- fallow. Yeah, fallow. <laughs> Why? To let the land rest. And the land would still, still produce some, and they could reap what was off, what would just happen naturally. But the land needed a rest. And I said to Sherry, as... I'd just come out of full in laundry and I came to share. He said, I think God has been saying to me that maybe it's that last year was to be a fellow ground year. It doesn't mean I shouldn't have been knocking on doors or sharing the gospel with who God was my path. Um, good thing we did because Russ is a result of that, knocking on his door. And now he's here and part of us. Um, I tell you, I'm so encouraged by Russell and God, what God's doing in his life. Um, when times when I felt down and sometimes at times feel like quitting, I'd have the next day a meeting with, with Russell and being discipling with him and, and he'd tell me stories of what God's doing in his life and it gets me excited even more again. Um, so I'm thankful for how God's been working in his life and, and some of you have heard his stories of what God's been doing in his life. It's, just, it's awesome to see. But maybe this past year was a bit of a fellow ground year. This past Thursday, Sherry and I went to a prayer meeting at uh, Fireplace Church. Um, there's a group in Parkland County that's been meeting together for seven weeks praying for church unity among all the churches. And, and it's neat to hear that they've been doing that. And this last one, this past Thursday, was the seventh week, and they invited pastors to come and join to be part of the prayer time. Well, I was a little bit surprised when they said, we're going to do feet washing too, and I'm going, okay, feet washing, okay. Um, did I shower this morning? Yes. Now, I hope there's no lint around my toes for my socks. <laughs> um, I also need to wash someone else's feet. Okay. But it's scriptural. God's Word talks about serving each other by washing each other's feet. Um, so it is a good practice to do as the church. But anyway, so I was thinking about this. And then he said, we, we want to honor the pastors here by washing their feet. I tell you, it was a powerful time on Thursday. I sat down in my chair and the gentleman started to wash my feet and as he was praying, it was just neat the words that God was giving him to pray that were actually words of healing for me. Hurts of the past in ministry. That God was healing in me in those moments. As this man was washing my feet in service to the Lord and honoring me. I tell you, it's very humbling. It still chokes me up. And as they're praying for unity of the church, they're also praying about revival. And some of the pictures, I, I know some of us here are a little bit more leery because we're, we're not comfortable necessarily with the gift of prophecy yet. 
I, I would hope that we as a church grow in that more. I know my wife has a gift of prophecy. There's been times that I've seen God use her with that gift of prophecy. Um, but may we be open to that even more as we move forward. But um, as they were prophesying over Sherry some too, and, and as they were prophesying about what God is about to do about bringing revival in this area and how that's going to spread. And so I'm hopeful that we will yet soon see the harvest that God spoke to me almost eight years ago. That we'll see a harvest of new believers in Ottawa in this area who there'll be so many, I believe, there'll be so many that not our church or the Baptist church or any other church in this area that are true biblical churches will be able to contain it. We'll have to plant more churches. So may we pray as we go to our time of prayer in a moment here for that too. Lord, we pray that you'd heal us of the hurts of losing people. But Lord, may you continue to build us and may we be faithful with the few you have given us to care for together. So here's hopefully words of encouragement to us today. Number one is persevere. We've gone through a bit of time of trial. And that time of trial may not be completely over yet because part of that trial time is the healing still that comes. But persevere through the trial. Secondly, this is God's church. God's not done with us yet. He has work for us to do beyond our lifetime unless he comes before our path soon. Which that is my prayer. Lord, come soon. I want to go home to heaven. And thirdly, be faithful with the few. Those that God puts in our path together as a church, but also individually, may we be faithful with the few that God has entrusted to us to care for, to disciple the few that he puts in our path to reach with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much that you are the God of all hope. Even at times when we feel hopeless, there is still hope because you are our hope. And Lord, the hope that we have is not hope that we hope happens someday, but is a hope that is realized, that is true. The gift of salvation you have given to us, but also the work you've called us to do until you call us home to heaven. So Lord Jesus, thank you so much. First of all, that you called us into your kingdom to be your sons and daughters, to be your church. And thank you, Lord God, that you have called us to do your work. We thank you, Lord, for the equipping you give us, the spiritual gifts you give us to do your work, the talents and abilities you give us, the relationships you give us. Us as a body of New Life Christian com community and the, your greater body of, of the church too. Thank you for these gifts you've given us to do your work. Thank you we don't have to flounder on our own to do it or figure it out ourselves, but you lead us and guide us. Holy Spirit, we ask you too that our eyes will be continuously be open to the direction you are leading us to do, to do the work of our Savior, Jesus. The will and the plan of, of the Father. So Lord God, we thank you and we praise you. God, you truly are a good God. And Lord, now as we go into our discussion time now, Lord God, we pray that you guide us in our conversation. Lord, may you use this time to build us up more together and in you. For these things we pray in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen.